Hi everybody, I want to give you a quick rundown on some tips and techniques I guess or some organizational pieces for your Google Drive because let's face it, Google Drive can very quickly and easily become a hot mess and there's no better way to ruin the um, stamina or the enthusiasm you guys have for back to school as everybody does including us teachers than to get bogged down by the hot mess that is Google Drive and the lack of organization in our digital lives. So let's nip that in the bud right now and let's talk about some ways that you can organize your Google Drive that's going to help you keep that enthusiasm a little bit longer, um, keep your sanity, improve your time management, all of the above. So newer to Google Drive you'll see right away is that the three most recent items that you've had open are um, will pop up as boxes up top here and then you'll have um, depending on what view you have uh, mine is the list view you could go to grid view which is this it shows you the grid of all your folders I'm a list person um, so I go back to list um, so that's one tidbit here is the format that I'm going to highly, highly, highly recommend for every student at Oak Hills High School, no matter what grade level you are in. Create a new folder for each year you have been in school. So for instance, freshman, if I were you, I would create a new folder. So you'll go up to new, you'll click on folder, and I would name it middle school. So that way, everything that you did in middle school, and maybe you already have a 6th, 7th, and 8th grade folder, you can drag and drop those into a middle school folder. It's in one place. You don't have this big, long list of overwhelmingness. For freshmen, or I'm sorry, that was for freshmen. For sophomores, I'm going to recommend that you make a folder for the year, each year, so sophomores, juniors, seniors, each year that you have completed. So seniors, you are going to make a freshman, sophomore, and junior folder. Okay, if you haven't done that already. So go ahead and create that folder. Now I want to drag and drop. I want to put all kinds of things from let's say my freshman year into that folder. Let me show you the easiest way to do this. So go over on the left hand side under new on my drive and click that little drop down arrow to the left of it. This shows you all of your folders. Oh look, there's that little freshman folder I just created. Okay, so I'm going to go through, it's probably all just down here at the bottom, and I'm going to select a few items that I would like to drag and drop that I want in my freshman folder. So let's say it's this one all the way down to this one down here. Okay, so I'm going to select the top one. I'm going to click shift on my keyboard and select the bottom one. Notice that that selects all of them. You can do that in your email as well, by the way. So then I'm, I've got them all selected. I'm going to click anywhere in the blue highlighted field and I'm going to pick them up. Notice that it says I have nine items and I'm going to drag and put them in the freshman folder. Now I'm not going to do that because I don't have a freshman folder. But you would do that for all of them. Now seniors, I understand this can be super overwhelming for you because you're like, well, what did I do freshman versus sophomore versus junior year? If you would like to just make a freshman through junior year, you can. Um, I would take a little bit more time than that to kind of decipher what goes where, or maybe you do it by subject level. But instead of having this overwhelming list of stuff that's just randomly in your My Drive, put them into folders. Now, let's talk about how Google Classroom really quickly incorporates with this. You're going to have a classroom folder as soon as you become, as soon as you open Google Classroom essentially and have joined any classes. If you click that little drop down arrow or click on it your, itself, you will see any course you have ever been enrolled on Google Classroom. It automatically creates its own folder for you. I would, if I were you, uh, make sure that you do the same kind of technique there and moving all your old stuff into a folder. Now, there's also another easy way to handle that organization here. Let me get to Google Classroom really quickly. You can unenroll from a course. Whoa, that's totally cool. Just have some caution there because what if you need something from your junior year English course, your senior year? You just never know. Um, but if you're looking at all of your courses, say this one, you'll click on the three dots 
and you will click unenroll. Simple as that and it won't pop up anymore. Now, I could be totally wrong here. I don't think it gets rid of your Google, your Google Drive folder. So I would just put that in a, maybe you make a folder that says archived or old classes and just drag and drop them into that class. Now, another really good organizational technique in Google Drive um, is color coding. You'll see that some of my folders are already color coded, but let's say that I wanna make my American History folder a certain color. So I'm gonna go to it and I'm gonna right click on that bad boy and I'm gonna select change color. Um, let's see, I don't really have anything purple, so I'm gonna go with this purpley purple. Bam, my American History folder is purple. Okay, I don't color code anything that I don't use a whole lot of. Okay, so like this is another Teacher's Honors American History folder, so I don't use that a lot. Um, so things that I use a lot or have used a lot in the past, I will color code just because it's, it's all gray if you don't, right? Now, based off of one of the last videos you watched in Google Keep, I recommended that you color code your different homework notes by class. So if you have an English course that you color code blue, make sure that you're color coding similar items in Google Drive as well. It seems like maybe a lot of work up front or just kind of like superficial, oh, that's like girly, I wanna color code stuff. Well, yes, but in a month, you're going to be so, it's gonna be a well-oiled machine for you. You'll see blue and automatically think subconsciously that's English. Um, and it just really kind of saves, it's a shortcut for your brain and it helps with some time management. Um, so it really is simple. One other quick note before we go. If you delete something, let's say that I have something in my grade cam folder, for instance, and I'm going to right click and I want to remove it. I don't want it in this folder anymore. Well, that's not what remove means. Remove means throwing away. Okay, so don't think that it's removing it from a folder. If I want to remove it from a folder and put it somewhere else, I'm just going to click on that item and take it somewhere else. Okay, don't remove it. That's putting it in the trash. If you put something in the trash and immediately notice you didn't want to do that, so let's say I put this in the trash. Well, look what happens at the bottom. Undo, undo. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, it came back. If you deleted something a long time ago or a few days ago and want it, just scroll down, look at your trash. You can search then in your trash. Okay, if you know the title of something that you want and don't know where it is, just go up to search drive and search for the title of my homework I haven't done yet. Well, that wouldn't be the title, I'm just being silly, but whatever the title of the, the doc or slides, whatever it was, um, you can search for it up there. So I hope these quick, really simple tips help you um, and they kind of helped you not get help you not get bogged down by student life in the digital world. Everybody have a great day.